Welcome to the bold analysis. I have decided to respond to a question from uh, our viewers. And many people have even gotten to my inbox asking me, Kevin, what about that Dubai trip? Because from the Dubai trip, Raila came back a different man. And in this video, I want us to just understand, look at the chronology event, how it all happened before he actually came back to make, uh, came back on Friday to make that uh, explosive speech. On Tuesday, 30th April, Raila Odinga left JKIA. And this was after attending that summit that was here in Nairobi. And these photos were shared that uh, he actually met the World Bank president, Ajay Banga, in the JKIA airport on his way out to Dubai alongside Joho and Junet Mohammed. And he shared that last night at JKIA, we met with World Bank President Ajay Banga on the prospects and projections for Africa's growth. We were on our way out of Nairobi for a brief mission abroad and we'll be back in the course of the week. Junet Mohammed. This was on Monday. Then these photos were shared. Remember this meeting could still happen without any photo being shared. Now you will realize here that Joho is not here. Even though they went out with Joho and Junet. But in this meeting, um, if you check all the photos that have been shared, Joho was not here. Then on Tuesday and Wednesday, they, they were all there in that brief mission. Then on Thursday night, this photo emerged. Um, this photo is a photo of Ray Lodinga meeting with um, Ray Lodinga, Joho and Junette, meeting with some, some gentleman there. He's a named man. Now this unnamed man, I've tried to do some fact check. And I will realize that way back, I think back in 2019, 2020, Raleigh made a Dubai trip and also met this man. And uh, you can see, um, you can see the, um, the photo here. If you do, if you just use Google reverse image, you'll bump into this photo. Uh, I've just I, just, I think I even got the name. I just want to, yes. Yeah, nice meeting the Prime Minister of Kenya, right, Honorable Raila Odinga. This is way back. So the guy on the right of Raila is the same gentleman that he met in Dubai. If you check this too, if you check that photo that I shared with you with Joho and this gentleman, this is the gentleman. So this is the unnamed man. Um, I just want to give you some something. So when we were actually talking about it, um, when I saw the photo that was shared, because no one knows him, I said, Raila had just realized that they were out of the country for four days, and everyone else was speculating their broad mission, because even I think uh, one of us did an analysis, I think uh, Lee McQueen did an analysis on it, and we mentioned on um, the fact that he was out, and no one knew all that broad mission. So I actually concluded that the reason why that photo was shared was to tell us that, okay, I was meeting someone. But that person is not known. Now, that was on Thursday night. The video with jo the photo of Joho and that gentleman, uh, and, and Junette and the gentleman that he met there. I understand he's uh, some, some businessman or so. Then the next morning, and I wanted to be keen, the next morning, there is something they just wanted to know. And maybe finding out, number one, would Raila accept to go and meet them that time? Number two, it was a point of, you know, we have something urgent we want to talk to you. But you can realize that Meg Whitman rushed to Raila. Immediately Raila left Dubai. So, on that day is the day that he also confirmed in making his speech while in... Uh, in, um, in, uh, while, while in um, Mukuru Karuben that has just arrived from Dubai. So there are two clips I want to play for you. I want to play for you the clip of him saying he arrived from Dubai 
And Kimani Chungo, while talking in Busia, also alluding to the fact that he might have met someone, I don't know, I don't know his master, some people in Dubai, and that's why he came back and changed his mind. I want you to play, um, I want to play for those two videos so that, because I think they, they lead to the same thing. So, the Kenya Kwanza are raising eyebrows. They're raising many questions that, who is this man that Trailer met in Dubai? Or what was this broad mission in Dubai? Why he arrived back and is totally different on, you know, he had taken a bit of a leaning, uh, he had taken a leaning position. Now, since Raila spoke in Mukuru Kwaruben, I have uh, listened to two leaders. One is Paul Mwangi, and I analyzed it here. He said that AUC is not a life and death. And then that was Raila's lawyer. Now, I also listened to Sifuna reacted today on what he thinks Raila Dinga, that if Ruto was sending Raila to Addis Ababa so that Raila can be, you know, so that Raila can be a timid or so that he can silence Raila, then he got it wrong. I think himself he reacted. And even apart from that, um, Raila also was speaking in Bondo. And when he was in Bondo, he was speaking in the Luo, he spoke about the fact that even if he goes to a disaster, he's not going uh, to go anywhere. He reiterated the fact that he will still remain politically relevant even if he goes to Addis. <laughs> Now, from that reaction, from that reaction, it tells you one thing: Raila is struggling to say, "I'm still interested in African Union Commission chairperson." But in real sense, the actions are not in tandem with whatever is being spoken. So, there is something that is happening here. Why the Dubai meeting has created some shivers on Ruto's side. And if you just want to know that, um, it, it's a bit different because uh, yesterday, uh, Arun Cheriot and Kimani Chungwa responded to Raila. But today on Sunday, I followed the church service in Kiambu, where Rigadi Gashaga was there with UDA Kenya Kwanza Battalion. They never responded about Raila. All the Kalijin MPs who are also in other events, no one is responding. No one did a backlash on Raila. Um, Dindi Nyoro was in Mwingi today. No one is talking about that Raila. No one is responding about that Raila thing. So, that Raila statement. So, it has got them a bit in some dilemma. And I think the president might have called the Kine Chungu and told them to keep off that discussion because if Awangi Kwa Meumbiwa, then today in uh, Kiabu, you would, have, you would have really seen fire, including the Gadege Shagwa. So, why this has created, uh, is really <laughs> giving them some uh, sleepless nights. I think Kenya Kwanza team are feeling 
that Raila might have secretly met Uhuru Kenyatta and Uhuru Kenyatta successfully convinced <coughs> Raila <coughs> sorry successfully might have convinced Raila to drop that African Union chairperson bid and that might, might have shared intel on the outcome of that vote next year the outcome of that vote and um, this is this is largely what they think because they think if that is it then they are foreseeing another season of political pushback from the opposition side if that is what Raila is going to do now number two there could be um i think both ruto kenya kwanza and even the u.s envoy they are feeling that there could be other forces that have hijacked rhino dingas african union bid and they want it to be pushed outside william ruto's circle and this then detaches us maybe they realize the us have one of the most they have intelligence all over the world so they can know they would know that where Raila was in dubai yes someone's just telling me kevin they would know someone can challenge me but someone is telling me kevin they can they they may be in a position maybe they knew what Raila went to do in dubai and they could have gathered that intel within so if these are forces that are pushing Raila to vie outside uh, the Ruto shadow, then that means that the East African, remember the, 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 the candidate has to come from East African region, the Eastern Africa, not East Africa, Eastern Africa, which have 11 countries. So the 11 countries one has to produce. So maybe some other foreign powers that also have interest have decided want to knock out US and take over the Raila bid. And at this moment, I would want to ask a question. And uh, someone who has an answer can, can give me the comment section. If a candidate is vying for that position, does that candidate, must that candidate get some letter from Kenyan government and that he is a Kenyan candidate there? And if that letter has to come from any minister from state house or wherever is there any ground of government blocking anyone who seeks that position for example if today kalonzo msieka also says he wants to vie for that position can kenyan government support or block any other person from going i want i'm, I'm so much interested in that question because I saw a report that uh, Museveni is supposed to propose Raila's name. Then Rwandan President Kagame is also going to propose, is going to support, or rather is going to second. So, is it a must that president, president of your host country, of your home country, must support it formally for you to be a candidate? You know, or your president is just a campaigner because what what the uda mps have been telling us is raila should stop disrespecting his chief campaigner and I'm, I'm i'm so much interested in that but people in the diplomatic front can tell us huh? i remember when um i remember when when amina muhammad lost to muhammad faki back in 2018 uh, there was some information came out that number one some east african countries including uganda and I think Rwanda, if I'm not wrong, I stand to be corrected, did not vote for Kenya. But some other forces also emerged. Some other countries also felt like the more Uhuru Kenyatta was pushing the Amina Mohammed candidature, it was like it was a bit was going to push the Kenyan agenda. And some people felt uncomfortable with it. So that is a dynamic that can be available. Number three. I think Kenya Kwanzaa are a bit taking a backseat because they're a bit in dilemma because is it possible that Trailer received some campaign funding for 2027 
and is just all out coming back to campaign because what he came back if you look at what happened immediately they arrived the next day joho held a massive rally in homa bay and that was his first time to conduct a rally since 2022 general election joho and the mombasa battalion camped in homa bay campaigning and painted homa bay yellow even though i understand someone can tell me that um, the homa bay rally was also counter checking on what you had done during that um, grassroots uh, the grassroots elections because they bribed some people and the whole homa bay the, some some fellows in homa bay town were moving around with the yellow caps so it could also have been organized just to 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 to, to try to control the damages that might have been created during the grassroots elections so but that is also a point you went came out of dubai and was in homa bay conducting a rally now the other third point the other fourth reason um is a probability that raila would still secure that post without tuto support and what i mean here is not without tuto's campaign or rather without tuto's vote and at this moment i would want to ask just in east africa how many votes do you believe that william ruto will be able to influence on behalf of any candidate even if it's not Raila Odinga so it's very interesting but if you look at the way things happened that dubai trip and the unnamed businessman that um, Raila met in dubai has really sent some shockwaves on kenya kwanza thank you